Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's Pastor Dave Jamerson here at Renovate Church. I hope that you have had an incredible Christmas celebration. Uh, here we are the day after Christmas, uh, and we have been focusing on this whole idea of making room. And uh, over the last month, we have looked at people who've made room for Jesus in their lives in the midst of complexity and complex situations. Uh, we looked at Joseph and how uh, he had to make room for God in the midst of skepticism and inconvenience and even opposition. And then what came out of that. And uh, Tammy did a great job talking about Mary and Elizabeth and how they made room for God's purposes in their lives. And the fact that uh, pondering people uh, make room for Jesus while preoccupied people uh, many times don't. And, and then Pastor Nello did a great job just talking about the wise men and how they made room for God uh, in the midst of just making room for wisdom in their lives. And, uh, and then we had a great Christmas Eve celebration where we just talked about uh, hope and the thrill of hope that the gospel story gives us, that in the midst of a dark and complicated world, that uh, this, this gospel brings us hope, that they were waiting expectantly for the promises of God and for the Messiah, and God fulfilled that. And now here we are, kind of in the second advent, waiting for God to fulfill his promises and work, and we're in the in-between, just like they were. And yet, they had incredible hope, and we can have incredible hope uh, during this time. So again, I hope you had a great Christmas yesterday uh, with your family. And so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to begin to try to bridge uh, everything that we've been talking about over the last uh, four weeks uh, into this new year, because we're getting ready to start a new year, 2022. And uh, I want to just focus on uh, a couple things about how we can practically make room for God in our lives. Because again, we hear these stories of Joseph and Mary and Elizabeth and Simeon and Anna and uh, the, 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 the wise men and all this. And you know, okay, yeah, they made room for God in their lives, but what does that look like for you and I? And I really want to look at uh, one main passage of Scripture, and I want to look at Acts 19. Uh, it's in the New Testament. It's the fifth book of the New Testament. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and uh, John, and then the book of Acts. And uh, as the gospel is kind of spreading uh, across uh, the regions and uh, around the world, uh, we're going to see uh, this man named the Apostle Paul who made room for God in, I believe, four key ways that I think are really important for us individually and as a church in this next season of time. And I, as I said, I'm going to try to bridge the gap between this Christmas story and celebration and where I think God is calling us to as a church uh, over these next uh, several months. And so uh, if you have your Bibles there uh, or uh, you can follow us uh, in, in Acts 19, I'm going to go ahead and read it. And I, again, want you to see four ways that Paul made room for God. He made room for God, first and foremost, by just being available. He was available for God to use him and work through him. The second thing I want you to see in this passage of scripture where Paul was available uh, truly uh, to have crucial conversations with people. Uh, what the Bible calls evangelism and discipleship. That we're going to see in this particular passage of scripture that uh, how Paul made room for that in, in his life. Uh, the third thing that we're going to see is that Paul made room for intentional leadership development. Um, and I think this is important both uh, as a church, where we make room for this uh, as leaders, but also what we're going to notice in this passage of Scripture is the people themselves, in the midst of busyness, in the midst of their lives and so forth, they made room to be trained. 
they made room in their lives for Paul to pour into them and train them. And we really believe at Renovate in this upcoming season that pouring into you, pouring into our body uh, and deepening the leadership in your life is really, really important. And then last, we're just going to see that Paul made room for relationships. He made room to come alongside people shoulder to shoulder and to walk with them through uh, difficulty and adversity, through high times, um, uh, times where things were um, quite challenging. And so uh, again, we're going to look at uh, Acts 19, starting in verse 1. And those are the things that we're going to look at and then how we can apply them in our lives. So let me go ahead and read. Starting in verse 1, it says this, While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, verse 4, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. So here we have uh, Paul. Uh, if, you, if you look at the book of Acts, you're, you will see... Uh, that Paul, uh, God had Paul on, uh, on mission. He had him on uh, certain missionary journeys. Uh, if you know anything about his life, uh, Paul was somebody who was persecuting Christians and was persecuting the church. And on his way to Damascus at one point, he has this encounter with Jesus where he gets knocked off of his horse and hears a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Uh, it's hard for you to kick against the goads. Who are you, Lord? Paul says, he says, I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. This was an incredible revelation. The very person and the very way that Paul was resisting and standing against is now, now he's having this this encounter with Jesus himself and it, it changed the trajectory of Paul's life and Paul uh, later as he's recounting his testimony in Acts 22 and Acts 26 and in particular in Acts 26 Paul is sharing this with uh, King Agrippa and he shares where Jesus said to him, Hey, Paul, for this purpose, I appeared to you that I might send you to the Gentiles to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified in me. So Paul, as he had this encounter with Jesus, um, Jesus was doing something in Paul's life. He was, he was transforming Paul. He was changing Paul, right? And, but it wasn't just for Paul. That, that what God wanted to do was God wanted to radically get a hold of Paul's life and really use Paul uh, as a witness and as a testimony and as a minister to those around him. And Paul, as he goes on to say in Acts 26, he says, O King Agrippa, uh, from that day forward, I have not been disobedient to the vision from heaven. Right? So Paul's talking like 20 years after his conversion experience, and he is still on mission with the Lord. He still has a passion to want to see other people uh, um, hear this good news that he experienced. He wants them to meet the Jesus that he experienced. This was, this was a motivation and a passion for him. Paul went through all kinds of challenges and setbacks and so forth, but he was still passionate about the mission. So as we come into this next year, we really believe that for us, God has a mission for us as a church. We're going to take the first month of the new year and we're really going to talk about what this mission is that God is 
that, that, that it's God's mission uh, that he is calling us to participate with him in. And it always involves people. That there were people, there are people that God wants us to reach and impact and see, uh, come to know him, to see encouraged, healed, so forth. So that's the first thing that I want you to see in this particular passage of scripture that I read is first and foremost, Paul was just available for mission. Look at it again. Let me read it as we start in verse one. Hey, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and he arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples. So guys, you can just see in this passage of scripture that, that Paul was available for the mission of God and the purposes of God uh, in his life. And listen, God has priorities and God does have a mission and God has uh, purposes. He really does. Let me read this to you guys. It's in another part of scripture in Philippians 2, 19 through 22, where, where uh, Paul is writing to the church at Philippi and he's uh, talking about, uh, hey, for us to have the same mind that Christ had, who did not consider equality with God something to be God, but he humbled himself, right? Jesus himself made room. Jesus came down, right? And, and we're called to emulate that. But look at what he says in verse 19 through 22. He says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. Verse 20, I have no one else like him Timothy, who will show genuine concern for your welfare. So Paul said, man, I have no one else like him who, who like really authentically, genuinely is concerned for you and cares for you. Verse 21, for everyone looks out for their own interest, not those of Jesus Christ. Another translation says, for everyone looks out for their own interests, not the interests of Jesus. So here's the thing that this particular passage, again in Philippians 2, 19 through 22, Paul is kind of saying, hey, here's this, this person, Timothy, who takes a genuine concern and care for people. And not only that, he looks out for other people's interests, uh, and not just his own, but not only that, he is interest, he is looking out for the interests of Christ. And guys, as we come into this new year, I really believe that, that God is wanting us to continue to make shifts in our lives like Paul did, uh, what he's talking about here to Timothy, um, where the interests of Christ, people, people who are hurting in our community, people who are around us, that that begins to take an even greater priority in our lives. And so from Acts 19, again, we can see Paul was moving in this same spirit. Paul, again, was, was, had a deep passion for the Lord's interests, for the interests of Christ. So not only that, but as we read, we see that uh, Paul was willing to enter into crucial conversations with people. So again, Paul was available. Paul was available for the mission of God. He was willing to travel from Corinth to Ephesus. He's, he's on mission with God, right? Um, and, but we see when he gets there, he takes time to have conversations with people and those around him. So let me, let me just read it again. Look at what scripture says. So it says, there he found some disciples. These were disciples of John the Baptist. And he asked them, so he, he enters into a conversation with people. He takes the time to do that. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So he's, he's again entering into these conversations and he's checking where people are at spiritually, right? He's not afraid to, 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 to broach these subjects and to have these conversations. Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? Verse three, John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's 
Baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. He spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Guys, not only is God calling us to be on mission with him and prioritizing that and prioritizing the interests of Christ, but I really believe that in this next season, God is calling us to and being willing to enter into crucial conversations with those around us. This is what Paul did. The Bible calls this evangelism. Paul was, was entering into conversations. And look, there are people all around us that if we would just say, Lord, we're willing to, to take the time to start conversations and ask questions. Uh, recently, Nello and myself and Brett went down to a conference down near the Arboretum called uh, the Bless Conference. And uh, Dave Ferguson, who's the pastor uh, of a church uh, up in uh, Chicago area, incredible leader, uh, started a thing called the New Thing Network. He was really sharing about this whole thing that they did as a church, which they called uh, the BLESS acronym. And he said, guys, it is really so simple for us to again uh, many times we think evangelism and re really reaching out to those around us is like so challenging that we have to be Billy Graham or, you know, be somebody who goes down on the campus and, you know, has all the answers for people and all this. And many times it's really not that. And he said that really what bless is, is just this. B is just begin with prayer, that if we would just begin to pray for those around us, those in our neighborhood, those in our workplace, those where we live, work and play at the gym, you know, different places like that. If we would just be postured like Paul was to say, hey, I'm willing to enter in to the conversation, uh, we'll never know uh, what will happen with that and the doors that God will open. So we begin with prayer. And then second is just listen. The L in, in bless is just be willing to listen to people, right? Just to having a heart to, again, enter into those conversations and ask people how they're doing. And hey, just ask people simple. Like Paul asked very simple questions here where he just was like, hey, uh, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they're like, hey, we've never even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Said, oh, wow. Like, What's your spiritual foundation? What's your background? Um, you know, and what baptism did you say? They said, oh, John's baptism. He said, oh, that was a baptism of repentance preparing for Jesus to come. But hey, a lot's happened since then. Jesus has lived. He's ministered. He's died. He's resurrected. He's appeared. He's ascended. Right. So Paul, again, was just willing to enter into these conversations. And again, as a, as a church, we know that we are called to engage in evangelism and conversations in the people around us, that this is the season for it. Um, so L is just being willing to listen. Um, e is uh, an easy one as well. So begin with prayer, be willing to listen to people. E is just eat. Just be willing to spend time or have a meal. There's this whole idea of, of biblical hospitality where if we're just, uh, again, available, and uh, Dave Ferguson shared uh, the uh, conference that we were at, the message that we went to, he just shared about how, you know, there was a friend that he met who their kids played on the same youth sports team and he just began to have conversations with this guy, they, they had interest. He would just invite him out to have a coffee or have breakfast or whatever. And it was at one of those times where the guy just really opened up and shared his life. And he said, hey, man, I'm going to share something with you that I've been holding in for a long time. And when I was like in college, I uh, was on a, a road trip and uh, got in an accident and my best friend died. And man, I've held this this with me the entire time and, and Dave was able to minister to him and he said man all that just came out of just not having an agenda for meeting with this guy but just genuinely caring about him and being willing to enter into his world 
and talk. He said, we talked about lots of stuff. We talked about business and sports and culture and our, youth, our kids and youth sports and all this. But it was just my willingness to spend time with him and be and have hospitality. What would that look like for you and I if we just made room and, and somebody outside of the norm and invited them to our house to have dinner with us and spent time with them and just got to know them. We would never know what conversations might emerge or what they might share with or what they're going through. Um, we make room to grab a coffee with them or grab a, a meal during the week. So Paul was willing to do that as we saw, right? He, of course, arrived at Ephesus. He found some and he and he began a conversation with them. So not only eat and then just serve. So Begin with prayer, listen, eat, uh, hospitality, and then just be willing to serve people. Like I'm telling, if we will just genuinely care about people and be willing, look, one of the greatest ways we can show the love of God to people is just taking an interest in their lives and being willing and available to serve them. And then last, he just said, share the story and share your story. That we don't have to have all the answers, but... Guys, we do have a powerful story to tell about, uh, just like Paul did, that motivated him. Paul had this compelling story that, hey, listen, there's a God in heaven who loves you and created you and knows you and cares about you that came down because he loves us. He was willing to go to the cross for you and I so that you and I could receive forgiveness of sins, that we could have, be reconciled to God, that we could have eternal life, that we could know God and walk with Him on a daily basis. Like, we have this incredible story to tell and we have our own stories to tell, the power of testimonies. So you're going to be seeing testimonies all here in this next part of this season because testimonies are powerful. So Dave Ferguson just said, hey, just if we're willing to bless people, begin with prayer, be willing to listen to them, eat with them, serve them, and then just be willing to share the story. It's amazing what God can do because we're going to see as we continue reading here what happens as Paul was available, Paul was willing to enter into crucial conversations. Watch what happens as the story goes on in Acts 19. So it says this. So we, we left off, there were about 12 men in all. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. So he goes to the religious people. He goes to the church people, right? Paul is arguing persuasively for, for, for the, the person of Jesus, the message of the gospel. But some, verse 9 of them, some of these people became obstinate. They were resistant. They refused to believe and publicly maligned the way, capital W. So here they are, they're criticizing Christianity, right? They're, they are um, rejecting and resistant to the message of the gospel. So Paul does something, he shifts here, and look at what scripture says. So Paul left them, he left the synagogue, right? Um, he took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. Verse 10, this went on for two years so that all the Jews and the Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. So not only was Paul uh, on mission, he was, he was available, right, to go to Ephesus. He was willing to enter into crucial conversations with people around him, right, that we saw. He was willing to invest in um, evangelism and discipleship in people's lives. And again, guys, we really feel like in this next season that discipleship is important at our church. It's, it's important for every single person in the church because we really believe that every single person is called to be a disciple and make disciples. It's just not the pastors who are called to do ministry. We believe every single person in the church has a role and a function and every single person is called to invest in others and make disciples. This is what Paul did. Paul 
entered into crucial conversations, but then he poured into this group for two years and probably taught them incredible things. The result that if you listened closely, the result, I'm going to read it again. So Paul's in the synagogue. He's getting resistance. He pulls away with this group of disciples to the school of Tyrannus, which is really a secular place. He pulls away. It says, Scripture says he's meeting with them daily, teaching them, right? So he's pouring into them as leaders. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But look at what it says, right? This went on for two years so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Paul's investment into these leaders, what it caused was that the gospel incredibly expanded out of that local setting into that entire region. Scripture says, right, the whole, so all who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. So there was incredible saturation of the gospel, incredible advancement um, in that entire region. So the gospel was, was moving forward. So, so again, not only was Paul Again, on mission, he was available. Not only was he willing to enter into crucial conversations with people, but Paul was willing to invest into training leaders. And, and again, we feel like in this next season of time, and you're going to hear these things roll out, we're going to ask every single um, person at Renovate to make yourself available for leadership, training, and development in your life. Uh, I really feel that God spoke this to me several months ago that, hey, we have this great core of people who have a heart for God and have a heart for one another and a heart for people. Dave, I want to go deeper with them. I want to actually train them at a deeper level. So Sundays are important, but Sundays aren't the only thing that we do. I mean, Jesus, yes, blessed the multitudes, but he also trained the few. I mean, Jesus poured his life into the three, the 12, uh, the 70, the 120. Those were the people that then took the gospel to the whole world. The gospel multiplied. And we really believe this is a season of multiplication, right? So this is what Paul was willing. Paul made room for God's purposes by being available to equip people for effective leadership and ministries. The disciples cooperated by being available for leadership training, right? And equipping, right? Let me read that again because you, you see it in the text, right? Paul entered the synagogue, spoke boldly for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God, but some of them became obstinate. They refused to believe. Sounds like our culture publicly maligned the way. Paul didn't get discouraged. He didn't throw his hands up. He said, okay, we're going to shift here and I'm going to pour into these leaders and these disciples and multiply ministry through them. So watch what it says. So Paul left them. He took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. Daily. Guys, we're not even asking for that. <laughs> We're, we're like, these guys, they were making time daily. Like I know some underground churches in China and stuff where people literally are, uh, they, they daily get together for prayer and the word and to learn and to grow and so forth. But man, we're just asking like, hey, one day a week, would you make yourself available to be equipped at a deeper level? And then last, uh, Paul really made room for relationships in his life and for care of people and care of believers. So again, he, he made room for God's purposes. Uh, he was available. He was on mission. He made room for conversations. He made room for evangelism and discipleship in his life. He made room for leadership development and the disciples themselves made room to be equipped and trained. Again, what was the byproduct? What happened because of all this? The entire region of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Man, this is powerful, right? It, the gospel rang out from there, from these individuals in these lives. Uh, but then last, he, he really did. He made room uh, for relationships. And I, I just feel compelled to share this, that guys, we've all come out of a very, very difficult season. Um, and I think we've continued to be 
in a challenging situation. I think that uh, people many times are weary. People many times uh, now are um, exhausted. They're hurting. Um, they're many times hopeless. Uh, they're discouraged all around us. And I've mentioned this before, you know, in elders meetings over the last few months, uh, some of our elders have said, you know, hey, you know, the reality is, is that, you know, most people to today are frustrated and most people are discontent and most people are exasperated because of everything that we uh, have gone through. And I really believe that this is, a, in, even in a greater way, that this is a season and a time for us to come alongside one another and come alongside people and be willing to walk arm in arm with them, shoulder to shoulder, to, uh, shouldering burdens and loads that people are carrying. And again, you see this in the Apostle Paul's ministry. I mean, he said at a, uh, another point in scripture in Colossians 1, he said, hey, you know, I make it my aim, my passion. You just see this relational dynamic in Paul, this commitment to people that he carried, right? He said, hey, man, I make it my aim, right, to uh, see Christ formed in people. And he said, you know, and fill up in my flesh, the, the afflictions and burdens of Christ. Like, you just see that, man, Paul, he cared deeply about people. He was willing to walk through challenging and difficult things with people and invest in them. And guys, we really think that these uh, four things are, are the things that God is calling us to emphasize as we come into this new year. We really believe that he's saying, hey, you know what? I want a greater availability out of, out of Renovate and out of your lives. I, 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 I want you to be willing to enter into crucial conversations with people um, for the purpose of evangelism and discipleship. Would you, will you be willing to? I'm wanting you to set aside time for you to be trained at a deeper level in your walk with God and your call and your leadership and the ministry that's on your life. Will you be available for that? And then last, would you come alongside people in this season in a greater way, uh, not be disconnected and not be fractured, but in a greater way, be willing to walk with people through difficulty and hardship and disappointment. Um, this is what the church is called to do. And I really believe that as we focus on these things in this next season, um, on the mission of God and reaching people and pouring into people and loving people and training leaders and releasing people in a greater way um, that we're going to see uh, God do incredible things in this next year, in this next season of time with us. So I encourage you, uh, go back, read Acts uh, 19 uh, verses 1 through 11 there. Um, let me just double check. Yeah, 1 through 12. And uh, meditate on that, see those themes in the, that particular passage of Scripture. And uh, I hope you're uh, ready for it, encouraged by it. Uh, let me go ahead and pray. And again, I hope you have a great uh, remainder of 2021 as we get ready for 2022. Let me pray. God, thank you so much um, just for who you are. God, we love you. We honor you. Thank you for... Um, saving us, loving us. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of what you're doing um, here in the world, but, but particularly here in North Austin. And uh, God, just um, position our hearts for this next season of time. Um, God, we really believe that you want to um, move and work in us and through us for your glory. And um, just let our hearts be positioned rightly uh, as we head into this new season and this new year. And uh, we pray that you'd be glorified through what we do. Continue to build your church uh, here in North Austin through Renovate. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, look forward to seeing you on January 2nd for our service uh, right back here uh, at our location at Scottsdale Crossing.